What's up YouTube, my name is Alec, this is Alec Makes Things, and in this video I am gonna be reviewing the latest release from LEGO Technic, which is this absolutely awesome Mars Perseverance Rover set number 42158. So in this video, I'm gonna give you all of the product information for this set, outline the features and functions that it's got, and I'll also show you some of the highlights from the build process. On top of that, I'll give you all the pros and cons, and also give you my thoughts and let you know if this is for you. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know absolutely everything that there is to know about this particular set as well as some extra information about the actual real life Mars Perseverance rover. So if this sounds like something that you want to watch then you are in the right place. If not what I recommend you do is you hit that like button and then watch this video at half speed. So number one product information. This set is suitable for kids aged 10 years and older but it's also suitable for nerds of basically any age. This set contains a pretty reasonable 1132 pieces and that comes in about 100 US dollars about 93 euros. 160 Australian dollars and about 90 British pounds. And so by the power of maths, we can deduce that that is about nine US cents per piece, which is actually pretty low for a model or a set of this size. So this appears to have been released basically everywhere in the world other than America on the 1st of June, and in America it will be available on the 1st of August. This was based on the actual real life Martian rover called uh, Perseverance or nicknamed Percy. That was launched back in 2020 and essentially was designed to explore a specific crater, the Jezero crater, and explore that for signs of ancient life, as well as collecting rock and regolith, which is kind of just broken rock and soil on the surface for testing. And they hope that one day we'll actually be able to get those samples back to Earth for analysis. So the Lego Technic version of this marvel of modern aeronautic engineering weighs in at 1.5 kilos, is 32 centimeters long and 23 centimeters tall and 23 centimeters wide. So it's a reasonably sized vehicle. You can probably see sat in front of me. It's not super imposing. It's nowhere near as big as some of the other vehicles that they've got in their line but it takes up a nice bit of space on the shelf features and functions so there are no motors or pneumatics in this set there are only winding components which are connected to gears on the inside so first of all we have this arm here at the front and this is controllable by these dials at the back they bring it up and down and they also move it from uh, left to right and this contains in the real life version the equipment they would use to collect samples from the ground so all of the actual controls in this are essentially gears that all connect through axles to each other and that's that's essentially how everything in this is controlled it also has this articulated suspension so we've got some movement at the back wheels here and then this uh, controls sort of overall movement there's no compression suspension on this uh, and it's not the best for going over um, objects but the real version in, in real life is also not, not really like that as well. Uh, it's not designed to go over massive objects but there you go. The wheels on this are I think particularly cool. They were designed specifically for this model and they're one piece so they don't have a separate tire and hub. The steering is managed by this stick and dial here and that kind of flips the wheels between different directions uh, allowing it to turn either uh, go forwards or turn uh, in a circle. So the drone that comes with this is a real nice little accoutrement and it's the first thing you build, it's dead easy, it pretty much takes you just a few minutes to build this but I think it looks really good next to the unit on the shelf, I think it really does add something. So this was actually a relatively easy build process, it doesn't take a huge amount of ingenuity to put this together and it is designed for 10 year olds and over so it makes it very accessible but that being said there's still some really interesting components to this, there's some really nice internal mechanics when it comes to how they uh, move the motion from one end here to the arm at the other end and I think they do a great job of that. The suspension is also nice, but relatively simplistic. Overall, I'd say the build process is good fun. When it comes to pros and cons for this unit, I would say overall, I had a really good time building it. I think probably the most standout thing is the aesthetics for this unit. This looks exactly like its real life counterpart, and it's got all of the equipment and accoutrements that you'd kind of expect for something like this. The wheels on this unit, as well as the arm, are probably the two standout features. I would say the suspension is interesting, but it really doesn't do an awful lot. And it doesn't really assist when you're going over rough to terrain so I wouldn't say that's really a plus or a con to be honest it just kind of is what it is but it is very reflective of the real life version of this particular vehicle. Now this arm obviously is articulated and I think the way that, that is managed or accomplished through the mechanics is really interesting and I really did enjoy putting that together however it is incredibly slow to move it and so it could maybe have benefited from maybe a different gear ratio or some motors or something like that uh, it is very 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 slow 
able to move this. And because it's got these kind of worm gears, it holds it in place, but you can't articulate the arm without using these controls back here. We could actually damage the components. Also, the manual is a bit of a letdown in this. I felt like in a lot of manuals, they give you a bit of information about the vehicle or the, the thing that the set is based on. And I've seen that in a few vehicles recently that was a few sets that I've done. However, with this, I think it could have benefited from it even more because there's a lot of these components on here, which to look at just look like kind of techno gubbins or space greeblies. It's very hard to really know what any of this stuff actually is. And so I ended up going on to the actual NASA website, looking at a 3D interactive model for this, just to understand what these components actually are and what they do in more detail, which is great. And I really enjoyed that, but I felt that if that was in the manual, I think that would have been better because as you were building it, you would have had a reference in the manual or something that says, oh, this is a camera component or this is a drill, or whatever it is. This is a power supply. You know, this is a transceiver or you know, radio com communication device, whatever it is. I think if you knew what you were building, it would have had a little bit more of an impact. I think the best thing about this model really is the overall aesthetic. I think if you're into NASA or space or exploration, and I was always keen to hear about these programs and projects that the different uh, space agencies are doing, I find it really interesting. And I, I just think this is an absolutely fantastic piece of engineering in real life. You know, it's one of the sort of greatest achievements really of, of any space program actually to have a robot moving around Mars collecting information. So I think it's a great subject material to turn into a Lego set. It's also relatively inexpensive on a cost per piece part. Obviously only you will know if you can afford something like this, but I would say it's definitely accessible uh, both from a financial perspective as well as from a kind of like ease of doing it perspective. It's not too complicated to build. I could see people buying this as a kind of one-off piece that don't necessarily normally collect Lego just because it's just a particularly interesting piece. That being said, I think this would be really good for anyone that's interested in this type of thing. If you're looking for something with a bit more complexity or more of a challenge that maybe go from one of the larger pieces of equipment or uh, one of the other cars they've got available. Um, I would say this is definitely suitable for kids and looks great on a shelf. I had a great time building this and I'm keen to know what your thoughts are. So do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this, then hit the subscribe button. And if you've got any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.